Have you ever wondered what coercive control is when it comes to narcissists? By the end of this video, I'm going to give you a really good, solid definition of what coercive control actually is and even better, what you can do about it. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zong, top 1% attorney and the best-selling author of the books Negotiate Like You Matter and Breaking Free, a step-by-step -step divorce guide. And I've helped thousands of people go from lives of drama, trauma, and chaos to step into lives of freedom, possibility, and purpose. And I do the same thing for you right here in these videos. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And that way you'll get notified when I upload brand new content and I have brand new content all the time. So let's talk about what coercive control is when it comes to narcissism. The thing that you have to do is understand where it comes from before we can even really understand what coercive control is and why they do it. So narcissists have no inner sense of value. Something happened with them when they were back in their childhood and they, 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 they came to a conclusion that the world is a bad place. They came to a conclusion that, that they have no sense of value, that there's something maybe innately wrong with them or something in it, in, innately broken. And, and it could have been anything. It could have been a trauma that happened to them. It could have been abuse that happened to them. Um, I've even read some things that have said that children who are overindulged too much. They feel like their parents didn't care enough about them to uh, discipline them, to give them boundaries. You know, children need boundaries. They need guidelines. They need structure to feel uh, secure. And, and without that, they sometimes end up feeling like they have no inner sense of value. So who knows how it happened, but what happened is that at some point they drew the conclusion that they didn't have value to them. So they ended up um, feeling like they needed to get value from the outside world in some way. So they're trying to layer it on, they kind of slather it on this narcissistic supply, but underneath, you know, it's still a feeling of emptiness, of worthlessness and all of that. And no empaths, you can't fix it. You can't make them better. They just end up sucking you into their poisonous vortex and you just end up trying to get out. When people are, are, are leaving a narcissist, they don't just walk away nicely. You know, they, they, they run with their hair on fire trying to get away from these people because it's terrible. So you can't fix them, but they have this sense of em emptiness inside of them. And so they draw this conclusion that they need to take control of the world by you know, controlling everything around it um, because without that sense of control, they feel like they're not being seen. They feel like they don't exist in the world. So coercive control is actually a form of narcissistic supply. And that supply is anything that feeds that narcissist ego. So it could be, you know, anything that feeds a narcissist ego. It could be money compliments or, you know, prestige or whatever. But most of the time what you see with narcissists is where they are actually trying to control a person or they're devaluing them or they're manipulating them or intimidating, you know, all of those kinds of sort of the dark side of narcissism. Those are the kinds of things that you often see with narcissists. And if you've seen that dark side of a narcissist, give me an I've seen it in the comments. So when a narcissist feels insecure, which is all the time, they try to exert control over other people in order to kind of control their environment. So they, 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 it's, it's a type of control that they put over a person that ends up manifesting itself in all sorts of ways. You know, they actually start to, you know, maybe want to know where you are at all times. Maybe they look at your phone, Maybe they control how you dress, what you wear, who you see, when you see them. 
um, what kind of car you drive, when you drive your car. I actually saw a situation one time where the husband would actually you know, check the mileage on the car before he would leave for work and see, you know, if the wife drove anywhere at the end of the day. And if she did, where did she go? Um, you know, they might put car trackers on you. They might uh, track your phone. They might have some sort of software that tracks what your emails are, what your text messaging is, things like that. I mean, it, it can get really, really... Uh, malignant and poisonous where they're looking to control every aspect of your life. What you think, what you say, how you breathe, almost everything. And, and, and then while they're doing this, they're probably devaluing you and treating you poorly. Also while they're love bombing you and all the other things. But um, it, it's a form of, of controlling you that can go really, really deep and really, really far. But what they're trying to do is um, make sure that all of your world is about them. Every single thing. I mean, they might even be like, if you look at, 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 at happen to, you know, inadvertently look up and see a person, they might say, oh, you want that person. You know, they don't even want you looking at other people. They don't want you talking to other people. Sometimes it can get really, really um, um, advanced like that. So it's, uh, it can be kind of scary sometimes when, when they get really deep into this type of coercive control, but it's a form of narcissistic supply. It gives them supply to know that they have control. It feeds their ego. And, um, and if you want to know more about narcissistic supply, check out my video on narcissistic supply. It goes much deeper into what you need to know about narcissistic supply. In a divorce setting, how I see coercive control manifesting itself is when somebody chooses a lawyer and they really don't want you to have a lawyer because that now this is another person who might exert control over you, another person who you might listen to, another person who's going to be advising you, and you might be taking that person's opinion or advice over theirs, which of course, you should definitely be listening to your lawyer if you have one. So, but what they'll start to do in this particular situation is, they'll start to try to devalue your lawyer to you. So, you know, they'll come up to you and they'll say, you know, um, your lawyer is a bad lawyer or your lawyer is too busy or your lawyer um, is just in it for the money or, um, you know, they just start to, to bad mouth your lawyer in some way because they're, they're realizing that they're losing control over you. And if you want to know more about what happens when a narcissist is starting to lose control or what the signs are, make sure you check out my video on signs that a narcissist is losing control. But in a divorce setting, you know, they'll, anybody who's going to start to try to have control over you or that they perceived is going to have now control over you instead of them is going to become the enemy. So they're going to start targeting those people so that you stay into their web of control, even as you're, you know, on the, the way out, e even if they are divorcing you, even if they're the ones leaving you, you start to see that happening. So if you are getting ready to negotiate with a narcissist, grab my free Crush My Negotiation Prep Worksheet at winmynegotiation.com or at the link below. If you like this video, give me a like. If you think it's really gonna be helpful for somebody else, give it a share. Also, make sure to drop me a comment. I would love to hear from you. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you wanna be an even deeper part of the community, come join me in my free private Facebook group. It's called Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. And we will drop a link to that below. I'm so glad that you were here. I'm so glad you stopped by my channel. Be dealing with narcissists is hell. I'm here to help you get out of that hell with real concrete steps on how to do that. Remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. I'll see you in the next video.